as I start the presentation, I, I just wanted to, the, the room was a little bit quieter uh, before we got up for a break, but I really wanted to take a moment um, to kind of reflect in a moment of silence uh, for the members that, um, that, have, that have been, you know, victims of fire or any type of disaster that's lost their lives. As we know, the Lahaina, the Lahaina fire was uh, pretty devastating and there was uh, a lot of loss of life there. Cal Fire experienced um, the loss of um, three personnel uh, from their air operations uh, that was responding to a fire down in Southern Cal. So I think that uh, it's important when we get into events like this that we recognize those that have, have been lost. Thank you. So um, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me, Jennifer. Thanks for hosting such a wonderful event. This is my second year here. Um, it's been good to see so many people within this room that um, care so much. They care about uh, disasters. They care about helping. And so um, with that being said, I'd also like to recognize all the either current or former first responders that are in this room. I myself was a past first responder. Uh, I was a law enforcement officer, went into fire, went back into law enforcement, and then went back into fire. So I know what it's like uh, to answer the, the call, um, the what ifs, will I return home? My ugly mug was up there uh, towards the left bottom part of my cheek. That actually, there's a blemish on there, and that was cancer. Um, and so whether that came from on the job or because I surfed, who knows? but it was uh, cool to see the panel uh, before me. However, with that being said, here I come in and I'm introducing uh, nothing super really new, uh, but a material, right, that we're utilizing uh, in the industry heavily, um, also known as fire retardant. The one thing that I wanna make sure that uh, I do a, a decent job of explaining is fire retardant, fire gels, fire foams, there is a huge difference. Fire retardant is made up of inor inor inorganic salts. Gels and foam are made up of whatever material they are made up of. They need water in order to be effective. Fire retardants don't. They need water only for it to, to get to point A to point B. Once the water dehydrates, the fire retardant is still effective. So. You heard a little bit about me, my background. I currently work for a company that was once a startup three months ago. Um, it was started by uh, five individuals with a wealth of history as first responders. They have been under the planes like I have, been dropped on by the industry standard retardant that's currently being used. And they got smart and said, I wonder if we can uh, formulate something that's better and more effective and better for the environment. And they did. And so three months ago, we sold for a lot of money uh, to a company called Compass Minerals um, who bought us and provides our main ingredient, which is magnesium chloride. So I'm here to talk to you about the ground side of things. Um, there's the aerial side, which um, this year on the rabbit fire, which was down in Southern California, Cal Fire uh, made a little poke at, at our retardant. Um, you saw that it was red, so that's a little bit de uh, deceiving. Our retardant actually is like a pink color. And so they posted out on their IG, this is not a gender reveal. This is actually a new retardant that is being used. So it was the first fire retardant to be dropped in the state of California, uh, other than what we know is FOSCheck um, in over 20 years. So the difference between the industry leading retardant and ours is the ingredients that are involved. FOSCheck currently uses diammonium phosphate, which is a fertilizer. If I'm not mistaken, there's some testing, water testing that was supposed to be done um, here in the north uh, after one of the ma major fires. Um, it's funny, I've looked for the results. They were supposed to come out in 2021. Uh, I have not seen them. 
And the retardant that was being used was diammonium phosphate. And so what diammonium phosphate does is it encourages water eutrophication and fish kill off. Um, our retardants are all retardants that are um, authorized to be applied in the forest um, have to go through a crazy amount in testing. So the testing has gotten better, right, as time has come on. Um, but the testing back in the day, there wasn't a lot and there was not a lot of questions being asked. And those questions are starting to be asked. How many, how many in the room, if you can, with a show of hands, uh, knew about a federal lawsuit that was in place that actually went to the judge's chambers this year to stop the use of fire retardant? Anyone? So three or four. So there was a, there was a federal lawsuit that, that started to catch, um, catch uh, heat in a sense of, of actually going through the legal process to where they almost were able to shut down the use of fire retardant. And the reason why was the federal government, I gotta be careful, but the federal government uh, utilized an emergency act order in order to drop fire retardant. And the EPA, there was uh, a license um, permitting that needs to be uh, used or had prior to the use of any type of retardant, et cetera, around a waterway. Well, the, the fire retardant or the emergency um, basis of the use of fire retardant, they felt that it was, um, it was non-applicable to them. So uh, they were dumping the fire retardant or utilizing the fire retardant, and the lawsuit was brought together by a bunch of formal former uh, federal firefighters. And so it's been going on for a couple years. In the last past few years, it was thrown out immediately. This year in Montana, it actually went to the judge's chamber and everyone was nervous um, because fire retardant is effective. And I'm not here to smash anyone. Um, I'm just here to let you know that there is competition now. It's been a monopoly for 60 years. We broke that monopoly and now we're here. We're here to stay. But with that being said, there are questions that are being asked. There, they are seeing water eutrophication, algae bloom, and fish kill off. So the study here to my right, um, all these studies are done by the United States Forest Service. The holy grail is what is known as the QPL, also known as the qualified products list. So any retardant that is, that is uh, authorized to be applied within our Forest Service must go through this testing. This testing costs about three quarters of a million dollars. Um, it's extensive, at least a minimum of two to three years. If you fail one checkbox, start over, pay us again. So it is a testing that is, that is uh, it's, it's hard and you go through a lot of it. So the, the right side here, so the left is the QPL. As you can see, the highlighted, these are uh, some of our, our products that are on there. Um, and then to the left is what's, is, uh, what's known as LC50. So the LC50 is the Forest Service takes 50% of the concentrate of the recommend, uh, recommend, recommend, on the recommendation from the manufacturer. They put it into a pond for 96 hours using rainbow trout to see how much kill off they get. The higher the number, the better. The lower the num number, the worse. We were actually at 5,000 milligrams per liter. They were seeing no fish kill off. And so they, they just, they gave us a number so we could, we could say, hey, hallelujah, we're doing something right. So how do fire retardants work? Um, as many know, uh, fire preheats vegetation or fuels. Uh, fire retardant is a coating, right? It acts as, a, as a, a coating to the vegetation or to the material that, is, that it's applied to. Uh, it's not forever. If it is under constant heat, it will eventually burn off. However, as you can see in the verbiage, when the fire approaches a fire retardant line, that fire retardant is burnt down to the or inorganic salts, which then um, disrupts the fire behavior, either A, cooling it, or uh, to the point of putting it actually out. So fire retardant is used, as you guys know, to box fires in. 
You can actually use it, they call it an, uh, a direct attack, which is the initial response normally, it's water. Fire retardant normally isn't used as a direct response because of the cost associated with it. Water is scarce, uh, but it is free, right? So they'll, they'll, they'll look at the fire behavior, the topography, and then they'll set out a perimeter. They'll set that perimeter out with uh, fire retardant, hoping to box that fire in and maintain control within the perimeter that they set up. So that is what fire retardant is used for from the aerial side. This video that I'm about to show you, this was on a control burn at one of our state prisons. Um, so it was good to see good fire. There is good fire, good fire on the ground. Uh, we were asked to come out and participate, throw a line out in the middle of the control burn and to be able to show the magic of, of this happening or how it works. So I'm videoing, so don't, don't blame me for the bad coverage. It starts to get really hot, even though those flames look pretty small. They're about, you know, three to four feet off the ground. And uh, so I had to move. And, but that fire started in the far right corner. It was a straight line. As we all know, fire creates its own weather. The weather condition on that day, uh, we had about 20 mile or 10, 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. Um, and then it was overcast. So um, the fire kind of created its own weather in that way. So where, you know, the winds were crossed or, uh, crossing each other up, fire was running one way and then back to the other. But as you can see, the fire is being pushed to the corner because the retardant line is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. What fire personnel do not want to see is what we call burn through. So burn through would be if the fire were to get through. So let's say this vegetation is, or the application of the retardant is not um, properly um, uh, applied. Or if the product is ineffective, you would get the fire to creep underneath this fuel onto the other side, and then you would have a burn through, right? And so then that, now you have the fire outside of the perimeter of where they're trying to keep it in, and that's not good. So here is just the walkthrough of the line. Um, once again, it, it just shows uh, the retardant holding the fire the fire line that was there um, and how the fire approached that, that retardant line and it kept it from, from uh, crossing over. Um, so the retardant in this uh, case is, is, is um, pigmented. The reason why it's pigmented is for aerial operations so they can be able to see where they apply the fire retardant. Um, and so you get the gist of it, it worked and we were excited and, you know, we showed everyone that, which they already know, but I liked what one of the panelists said. The problem is when you show up and you say you have the next best, best thing, um, you kind of get looked at. The individuals that are standing uh, just towards the end of the camera, you can see them. They were actually inside that truck. They were kind of smirking and laughing. And then once they saw that this actually worked, they got out and were like, holy moly. That's really cool to see. So Lahaina fire, uh, as we know, most deadliest uh, fire um, to date in the, uh, you know, prior to the campfire. These are all preliminary, preliminary um, investigations, but it sounds like the, the, the fire was started by power lines down. And then it sounds like the fire was actually started by a rekindle. And what a rekindle is, is, the department goes out, they believe the fire has been um, extinguished. They leave and that fire restarts and now you have a restart and unfortunately the devastation. So how can fire retardant be used from the ground? 90% um, of fires in Southern California are started by roadside ignition. Caltrans has openly emitted um, based on studies that a majority or a significant amount of our roadsides are prone to fire. And as you'll see, these are uh, uh, stats that come from the state uh, fire marshal that we've had over 300 acres burned and about $2 billion on roadside ignitions. 
So this is from uh, 2017 and 2021. The one thing that I want to highlight is Shasta, which is also known as the car incident. That was deemed a roadside ignition. And so why do I bring this up? Because um, we are starting to see the proactive use of fire retardant along roadsides. A certain county, San Diego County, um, is spearheading that movement. Unfortunately, they are using our competitors right now, but uh, I do applaud them because they're thinking outside the box and they're saying, hey, what can we do to mitigate the risk of fire? Um, as you see currently, I think it's 16,000, 16,171 fires uh, that have been deemed a vehicle fire. Um, that's 16,000 fires. That's 16,000 times we have been lucky that the perfect storm has not hit, period. All you need for a mega fire is an ignition source with the perfect weather condition. Um, this highlights just some of the roadside starts and wildfires. Um, you can see Sonoma County, um, you know, 179, if I'm not mistaken, in a six or five year period. Um, again, that's, um, it's not the most on the map, but that still is uh, a significant amount of roadside ignitions that are starting in and around this area. So how can it be used? Like I talked about pre-treating high, high fire risk areas. Um, so like fields that uh, are not being mitigated. The one thing I want to say is that I will always uh, encourage fuel modification, whether that be mechanically, goat, whatever it may be. Uh, that is the best way. However, in certain cases, you cannot do that because of soil erosion. You can't get to uh, where the vegetation is, etc. And so there is a tool, which is ground applied fire retardant, that can be utilized and strategically placed to help protect evacuation routes. Uh, or to help mitigate the next start from a roadside ignition. Um, I got a couple minutes. So this video, I'll speed up a little bit. But we were, uh, we were lucky to work with a fire safe council down in Southern California uh, along a highway, or sorry, a roadway that was uh, very prone to wildfire uh, ignitions. And they used the grant. They actually used our competitor's product the first year. Uh, I was able to convince them to go the opposite way, and they did because based on white papers and their studies, they felt a lot more comfortable with putting the retardant down that we offer. So as you can see, I mean, it, they just talk about, they highlight what the area, the dry fuel. They talk about the cigarette butts and, and you know, some of the ignition sources that they've seen that have caused the fires. And then in the background, you can see uh, our team applying the fire retardant at about a 20 foot sloth or swath, sorry, uh, outside of the, um, the, the roadside. Safe Council is taking extreme preventative action. They've hired a company to spray fire retardant along a one mile stretch of road. When fires get started, if the conditions are right and the wind is blowing, it's really scary. The Fire Safe Council here applied for and was awarded a Cal Fire grant and are spending $28,000 on the fire retardant project. And because of the excess traffic on this road now, and apparently people don't care, they're just tossing stuff out. We thought this is a great place to test this product under the grant. That's another part of this story, the flame retardant product. The company Fortress is spraying down the roadside here and says its retardant is not fertilizer based, an important distinction because it doesn't promote the growth of invasive plants. Is as you see this, this, this vegetation along the, the side of the roadway, our product is not encouraging that growth for next year. So, um, which is the truth. Uh, again, San Diego County Board of Supervisors, uh, on a five to nothing vote, they authorized um, their fire protection to implement roadside vegetation with the use of ground, uh, ground, ground applied fire retardant. That is huge. A lot of roadside ignitions down in the San Diego County area. Um, it's being done. The heavy lifting's being done. We're looking to partner with counties and cities that want to take that next step of protecting 
uh, their roadsides, and more importantly, the evacuation routes. These are just some of the partners we've teamed up with, Cal Fire, uh, El Dorado Hills Fire, and Rio Tinto Fire Safe Marin, and uh, we have a sister company, Fortress Fire. And in closing, these are just some of the partnerships, the Fire Safe Council uh, that uh, recognized what work we did, um, a local government agency that allowed us to apply on the backside of a, um, of a uh, hill area that, that was prone to fire, and then just some of the other agencies that we've worked with, which they've, they've, uh, they've worked with our product. So thank you guys again. Thanks for listening to this uh, long, drawn-out uh, presentation, but I appreciate everything that you guys are doing, and thanks for your time.